Good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to discuss the financial overview of Biocon Group's Q4 and full year performance of FY25. Now, before diving into the details, I'd like to share a few opening thoughts. Building on our Q3 performance, our three divisions, generics, biosimilars, and research services have ended the financial year on a strong growth trajectory. And I must congratulate everyone for their effort in delivering this strong Q4. I would also like to now touch upon some key highlights for this quarter, which include the appointment of Peter Baines as Managing Director and CEO of Syngene, the global launch of our first GLP-1 formulation, Viraglutide, in the UK, and the introduction of lenalidomide and desatinib in the US. I think these are very important key milestones for the genetics division. The launch of Yesintec, our biosimilar Ustekinumab, which is one of the first biosimilars to Stellara that was launched in the US. And for Biocon Biologics, this is our fifth product from the portfolio to enter the US market. Again, I think this is a very important milestone. What is also important to mention as a key uh, you know, event this quarter is the settlement that Biocon Biologics had with Regeneron to secure a market entry date for Yesapili, our biosimilar aflibercept in the US, which we expect to be no later than the second half of 2026. Again, this is a very important milestone for Biocon Biologics because it is a very secure entry into the US market, unlike our competitors who have launched at risk. The other key uh, event this uh, quarter has been Sinjin's acquisition of a biologics manufacturing facility in the US, which positions us to meet the rising demand for biologic CDMO services, and that too from a US base. The group achieved a robust 15% year-on-year and a 16% sequential growth in operating revenue on a like-for-like -like basis after excluding revenues from the India-branded formulations business, which was reflected last fiscal in Q4 FY24. This quarter's performance was also bolstered by strong growth in generics, a steady progress in our biosimilars business and ongoing traction in research services. So for Q4, our revenue from operations reached 4,417 crores, reflecting a solid 15% year-on-year increase on a like-for-like -like basis and a 16% sequential growth. And this growth was driven by a 46% year-on-year growth of generics, a 9% year-on-year growth for biosimilars, and a 11% year-on-year growth for research services. Sequentially, generics was up 53%, and both biosimilars and research services were up 8%. Now, core EBITDA for the quarter stood at 1,363 crores, which indicates a 16% increase from last year, with a healthy core EBITDA operating margin of 31%. R&D investment for the quarter was 231 crores, accounting for 7% of revenues, excluding Sinji. Reported EBITDA for the quarter was 1,115 crores, showing a 16% year-on-year growth on a like-for-like -like basis. Profit before tax, excluding exceptional items, was 466 crores, a strong 45% increase on a like-for-like -like basis. Now, moving to full-year numbers, revenue from operations totaled 15,262 crores, 
which is really now beginning to touch a $2 billion mark, a 10% year-on-year increase on a life-for-life basis. Group core EBITDA for the year was 4,264 crores with a margin of 28%. And EBITDA reached 4,374 crores, reflecting a 3% year-on-year growth on a like-for-like basis with a margin of 27%. Reported net profit for FY25 was 1,013 crores, which is a significant turnaround when considering the performance on a like-for-like basis. I would now like to discuss our business performance in a segmental manner. Let's start with generics. Q4 has been the strongest quarter for generics in FY25, with revenue from operations reaching 1,048 crores, which is up 46% year-on-year and 53% sequentially. And this has largely been driven by the sale and of launch quantities of Lenali Duquette. The launch of liraglutide in the UK and desatinib in the US also boosted revenue performance this quarter. In addition, we received approvals for liraglutide in the EU and Everolimus Zotres tablets in the US. We also commenced supplies of Tacrolimus to China, where our partner expects to initiate commercialization in the first quarter of FY26. So all in all, I think we have some very exciting opportunities ahead. For the generics business, EBITDA for the quarter was 243 crores, which is up significantly from, from last year and the previous quarter. But as I mentioned, this has been bolstered by the leatherlitamide launch and the US uh, uh, launches. Um, EBITDA margins stood at 23%. For FY25, revenue from operations was 3,017 crores, reflecting an 8% year-on-year increase, um, which was according to plan, and it has met plan. R&D investments rose to 286 crores, which, it, which accounts for about 9.5% of segment revenues. And this R&D investment is aimed to drive future growth which largely is about our GLP-1s. And this is a very exciting segment that will be drivers for future growth in the near and mid term. EBITDA for FY25 was 377 crores with EBITDA margin at 12%. Um, EBITDA performance for the year reflected pricing pressure and higher operational expenditure linked to our new plant capitalization, namely the peptides API facility, the Vizac fermentation capacity, and of course the new US cranberry facility. Now let's come to biosimilars. In Q4, Biocon Biologics marked its first anniversary as a fully integrated global biosimilars company with a footprint in 120 countries. Key highlights include our key product and site approvals from global regulators, including USFD and EMA. Thanks to this, we received USFD approval for Jobevni or Bevacizumab and a positive EU CHMP opinion for Denosumumab. We also saw a strong commercial momentum with significant increase in market share across geographies. And I want to particularly congratulate the US oncology team for the excellent market share improvement that we have seen during the year, where Fulfilla or Pegfilgrastin has registered 30% market share and Ogibri or Trastuzumab has registered 26% market share which is more than a two-fold increase from last year. We have also seen a very successful launch of Yesintec with broad formulary coverage and physician adoption. And we look forward to this product being a great success for Biocon Biologics. Our partnership with Civica, a US-based not-for-profit supporting affordable insulin access for people with diabetes is a very important partnership 
and we've done this for ASPART, which we are very excited uh, in terms of what it bodes for the future. We are witnessing a surge in global demand for insulins, given our global scale manufacturing capacities, and we are well placed to capitalize on this very large emerging opportunity globally. The Biocon Group is also uniquely positioned to address the growing global burden of diabetes, as we call it, through this combined portfolio that we uniquely have of both insulins and GLP-1s. Now, moving to financials, biosimilar revenue for Q4 was 2,463 crores, a 9% year-on-year increase on a like-for-like -like basis. This growth translated into an EBITDA for Q4 FY25 at 540 crores, representing a healthy EBITDA margin of 22%. R&D investments were roughly between 6 to 7% of revenues. Full time, uh, full year revenues was at 9,017 crores, which is roughly $1.1 billion, up 15% year on year on a like for like basis, with four biosimilars recording revenues of $200 million each. And this demonstrates our strong payer and prescriber confidence in our products. Reported EBITDA for the full year was 3,028 crores, excluding a one-time gain for the BFI business divestment. EBITDA for the full year was 1,971 crores, with a margin of 22%. I do believe we need to improve our EBITDA margins, but even at this level, it is a still healthy performance. The R&D investments for the year were 7% of revenue, which will fuel uh, our growth in the future. Now, lastly, moving to research services, uh, Sinjin ended Q4 with revenue from operations of 1,018 crores, 11% year on year increase. Quarterly operating revenue crossed the 1,000 crore threshold for the first time. Um, EBITDA uh, was up. 9% year-on-year and 20% sequentially to 363 crores with an EBITDA margin of a strong 35%. As I mentioned earlier, the acquisition of a state-of-art biologics facility in the US this quarter enhances our capabilities in the global CRDO DMO market and creates a US manufacturing footprint in biologics. For FY25, revenue from operations grew a modest 4% to 3,642 crores, aligning with guidance, following a challenging first half, uh, which was uh, something that uh, Sinjin was really addressing very seriously. EBITDA stood at 1,114 crores, with an EBITDA margin at 30%. So in conclusion, FY25 has been a year of consolidation and transition, setting us up at an exciting inflection point. We are now on a path of accelerating growth and we must pursue FY26 with a commitment to innovation, digital augmentation, and of course, operational excellence. Thank you.